Good morning. Welcome to Core Conversations for another week. I hope that you are doing so well. It's Monday and we got our dad goals. We have you join us for a conversation. And as you can see, the title for today is R&R versus GNH. I hope those acronyms don't mean anything other than rest and recovery, grind and hustle. Ray, what's going on? Healthy by you, hi. Moon plot is Vietnam. Are you actually in Vietnam? That'd be amazing if you are. Thanks for joining us. We're gonna get going in a minute. Just give a thumbs up if you can hear me okay, everything's good. And if you could just chat right in the chat where you're from as well, it'd be awesome. Shannon, I missed that barbecue. Um, I haven't. <clears throat> I have heard something to say on that barbecue too, so it's interesting. But maybe I'll say it offline just because. Yes, good times, good times. Florida's in the house. Um, Shannon, I think I'm going to do a live on my Read for Ward 9 page and start hitting that up at a different time. I think we talked about doing it on Tuesday night or some night. Maybe we'll do that. So much to share, so much to do. All right, let's get this going here. So, Core Conversations podcast. Subscribe and share. Hi, Tammy. I want to talk about something today. I find um, this time of year, Renee, good to see you. Katie, thanks for joining us. And Moon Dang, thanks for, for being here. Um, I find this time of year, that this is when I start to ramp up my business. Uh, there's two times of the year specifically when things start to get really busy. One is in January, obviously, the New Year's resolutionists and stuff, and, and by time it's February, uh, they're actually, that's when they're showing up, right? Like January, they talk about you know making some commitment to the gym. February, they finally get into it. March break, it's back to normal. Similar things happen in September. So now September, everyone's like, okay, I'm done at the cottage and my kids are back to school and they're finally getting in the groove. What's going on? What do you have going on? I need to get in. I just last night getting a message. My husband has been talking about doing some plotties. Like, how does that work? So I think that this is a great time if you haven't been intentional about your business, kind of coaching through the summer, you're starting about rolling out programs, that this is the time when we start to do that. And that has kind of organically been happening with these conversations. Last week we talked about mentoring, we talked about programs. I actually did roll out a program last week and uh, like a 21 day challenge. I made it like a five day challenge rolling that um, is happening. So there's a bunch of things that start to happen. What's going on Swansea? Long time since uh, you've been in. So thanks for joining us again. Swansea Pilates is here. And um, so yeah, so that's it. So it becomes one of these things where now's a season to ramp up your business. No pressure. If you've been thinking about it, this is a chance to collaborate, co-create with people in this room about what's going on. That is why every time I start these shows, I would say like, if you have any online classes coming up, any workouts, workout, workshops, all those different things, please put it in the comment section. 
You're not hijacking my show to say, hey, I have this workshop coming up, it's on this day, whatever it is. So if that's you, <clears throat> and you have some new classes that are starting, some old classes that are restarting, workshops, you're speaking at some engagement, stuff like that, please type it in the chat. Put it in the comment section. What is going on? <clears throat> So yes, so that's what's going on. So please put that in the chat. If you own a studio and you're running some new classes, you have some new teachers coming on board, amazing. If you are an independent contractor and you have classes on the schedule and you're doing some online virtual thing that can reach out, do that. How many of you are still doing virtual classes or as soon as your studio opened and you went back to normal, you just dropped it? Show of hands if you still have virtual classes going on. So yeah, so those, those online classes, I have my online virtual classes Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, we will be rolling out, nice. Renee still got some going on. I saw that, I should've taken a screenshot of that. I will, I will definitely uh, repost that. So Tasha is joining. Um, Embracing change and, and talking through trauma on Wednesdays. So Tammy's doing a live and Tasha Edwards is gonna be on there and that should be a rich, rich conversation, I'm sure. Just the, the knowledge and experience and wisdom in that room is gonna make it fun. So definitely check that out. Uh, Tammy, can you put the time that that class is happening or that, that, that live is happening? Likewise, Renee, if you could put any times for virtual classes if you want people to join. Um, Cecile and I were talking about class, uh, how do we call it? Friend planting where we're like going to people's classes just to be another body in the room. So that being said too, if any of you want to join my virtual classes on Tuesdays or Thursdays at 1.30, please message me. I'll toss you the link to the class and you can join us. Noon Eastern Standard Time for Tasha Edwards on Embracing Change, Talking Through Trauma on Wednesday this coming week. And uh, yeah, so that's happening. And yeah, if anyone else has any online classes, please put it in the chat. There's a, uh... hi there, Helen. And sorry, I'm back to you, Renee. So your virtual classes, are those, are those open for anyone to join? And, um, and I strongly recommend for those who are watching, if you have any classes, sorry, any students that you're doing online classes with, you know, connect them with some other people's classes. Let them see other teachers and let them experience other eyes on them. I think it's just a great way for them to just feel good about what they know and also to get another perspective sometimes, which kind of sets them up for success in a different way. Strong advocate for that. And uh, I would love to do it sometime with my people as well. All right. So I have a question for you. And this is the question that comes out of a conversation that happened on Thursday where we're talking about mentors. We're talking about how um, Jen Hall was in, in the room and she was talking about how mentors should make you better. There's times when you have teachers who really are, are fantastic at elevating you and your gifts and your talents and they do a great job of getting you to get to the next level and you can see them they always want all the people they're working with to be better than themselves and they empower them in that way and they don't take away opportunities but they give them opportunities and they do it in such a great way so that was a, it was a fantastic conversation I strongly uh, recommend that you watch Thursday's live and just catch those little sound bites 
but this is one of the sound bites, something that she said that we just kind of glazed over. And this happens a lot. And this is why when we have lives like this, when I don't have a guest on, I will come back to something that was said so we can hang out on it, so we can unpack it, so we can talk it through, like family, like, like friends just wrestling with different topics. I want you to join me by answering you know, questions in the comment section. Also, on these days when it's like, just a, it's a freestyle, there's nothing really planned. If you wanna join me live on screen, you can just press request to join and I will bring you on the screen and we can talk through. You can answer it like in person. We can have a conversation around this topic. This is what she said. Even with the bad mentors, I've learned something. She said, even from bad mentors, I've learned something. And that is a really, that's a deeper statement than even was said there because a lot of times when we have someone who's supposed to be teaching us and they're terrible, I don't know about you, but I check out. I'm just like, okay, you know what? I have no time for this. this I'm paying money. This is supposed to be leadership. This level of leadership is abysmal here. Peace out. And when I'm forced to stay in the room, I have to change my mindset and I have to get to a place where it's like, okay, I can still extract some truths out of this moment. I can still look at what's happening and learn something. And uh, so, and she hit on that, that even when you have a bad mentor, you still learn something. So I don't want you to expose your bad mentor, but I do want you to share something that you learned, even from a bad experience with someone who was teaching you. They could have been horrible, but you still noticed the way that they did X. What was that thing? Here's Shannon's comments coming through right out of the gate. It says, I tell myself and all the all my cadets that you can take so much from, from you can take so much from poor leaders, especially what you don't want to be or do uh, as a mentor or leader. That's true. That right out of the gate, that is so true. Uh, Misty Lynn Gotham, what's going on? So just as a quick recap, the question that I just asked to everyone was a, a quote that Jen Hall said a moment ago, oh, sorry, said on Thursday. And she said, even from bad mentors, I've learned something. So the question for us today is, what have you learned from your bad mentors? And I don't want you to expose your bad mentors, but I'd love to hear something that you learned from someone that you thought was just a horrible mentor, but you still pulled something. I have guys that I've worked with, coaches that had good sayings, and I couldn't stand them at the time because I wasn't getting opportunities. Uh, but they said something that I actually stay with and I use a lot of the times now is just being your own person. And I, at times I feel like I was overlooked and I wasn't given opportunities and stuff, but I do recognize how he was looking for uniqueness, not someone who's trying to be somebody else, but someone who's unapologetically being themselves. And I, I ran with that piece. What was that piece that you ran with? And that's why I love Shannon's comment, where she would say to her people, uh, you can learn a lot from poor leaders. And the other part to that too is like, like being a parent, you can run with it two ways. You can run after it being like, I don't wanna be this person. Or you can run after like, I want to be like this person. My mom was terrible, I don't wanna be a bad mom like my mom. And you try and really work hard to not be that bad mom. My mom's awesome, I just used that as an example. Or you can be like, I'm gonna be a great mom. I'm gonna do this, this, and this, and this, and this. And you spin it in a way to the positive. But let's hang on to that for a second. Like, what, is, what are those things? What, what was a, you had a bad teacher, but you still took something good away from it. What was that thing that you learned? Uh, I have this, another comment here. It says, I've learned to listen to understand rather than just allow people to talk while waiting for your chance to speak again. Yes. How frustrating is that when that's happening to you? Learn to listen to understand rather than just allowing people to talk while waiting for your chance to speak again. 
I've learned that, and I actually I knew that before I started these conversations, but I realized how difficult it is to do that because there, there comes this fear, especially when you're on camera like this, that you're not gonna have anything to say. So you almost wanna jump in with what you have to say instead of trusting that when that first person finally finishes that you're gonna have something that's gonna follow up with it. And uh, so there's a little bit of a trust factor that happens with that. So um, yeah, it's interesting that you're waiting and allowing them to finish and listen to understand. You feel like you can't simultaneously listen to what's happening, formulate your thoughts without cutting that person off. So it's, it takes some practice. Misty Lynn Cawthon is saying, I've never had a true mentor per se, but I've worked with people who were at the top of the business thinking I would pursue them as mentors and learning that humility is more important than skill. Whew. Humanity is more important than skill, humanity. Um, and I wouldn't choose to work with many of them again, and that's okay too, yes. Well, yeah, and I think Missy, we were talking about that too, how people chase after wanting to work with a person because of their accomplishments as opposed to wanting to work with them because there's a human connection, uh, a human investment in the person. So I would rather work with someone of lower repute, if that makes sense, and human connection and someone of high reputation and they're just pumping this out to everyone who is willing to give them a nickel. So I think that that's how that plays out. But I mean, there's something to be said for saying, I work with this person and I'm whatever, in whatever industry, like I, I see, actually, I see that in insurance. All my clients work in insurance and they're like, this person had sold this and has sold these many policies and I've worked with that person. I, in that in insurance industry, I hear people, like some of my colleagues, and people I train talk about having to be mentored by this certain person and that's it. So it's not a unique Pilates uh, phenomena where you wanna work with the highest in the field and the most accomplished just to have your name attached to their name. It happens. Uh, so yeah, Mrs. Comment was investment in the craft and themselves too. Troy McCarty, what's going on? Troy, we're talking about mentoring and bad mentors, and what did you learn from a bad mentor? What did you learn from a bad teacher? I like, uh, Jen said that the other day in our conversation on Thursday, just around mentoring and all that warm, fuzzy stuff about them making you better, but then flipped it to the side, we're saying even with bad people, uh, bad mentors or mentors, people who just don't connect with you, because it could be good people, uh, but just bad for you, a bad fit for you, what did you learn? Hmm. <clears throat> I learned that, like you, to Misty's point about humanity, the human experience, and the power of that, that even in those situations, I've looked at those situations and been like, you know what, if I'm ever in that position as a leader, I'm gonna make sure that everyone feels heard. I'm gonna make sure that everyone feels like they are getting their money's worth. That they feel like they can walk away from that investment and know that they got more than their, their money's worth. They're not questioning if the time has been made. They're not questioning if the person actually even prepared for their time together. Like that's something that I always try and communicate to people is that there's a sense of preparation that has gone into our interaction. That, that piece actually is one of them, just re re remembering some situations in the past where I think that's the thing that, that bothered me the most. And therefore, when I go into like a personal training session or a group session or class, like always communicating in some way, shape or form that I actually prepared for this. And I may pivot all over the place and do nothing that's written on paper, but you still see that there was a paper with writing on it. We had a plan and we went somewhere else. I didn't just make the plan up right now. So that sense of preparation, I think would be one of the biggest things for me that I feel like that preparation piece annoys me when I've invested in it and I see the person just making up on the spot. I feel like, well, how important am I if you didn't even think about me before this second that I'm in front of you? What have you learned from your bad mentors? That's the first part of today's conversation.
without outing your bad mentors or teachers. I'm trying to keep this all family friendly here, people. How's it going, Coach Robin Renee? As you can see from the title, R and R versus G and H. Rest and recovery versus grind and hustle. And Michael Piercy had a post this morning that just kind of stopped me in my tracks. Because this is a time of year, even if I wasn't in a campaign mode right now, where I start to just ramp my business up. I start to think about September and just to push. My conversation with my individuals that I train one-on-one -on -one is, okay, September is coming up. That gives you two months before you start to use Christmas parties as your excuse why you're not working out, why you're overeating, why you're too tired. We have two months to grind, two months to hustle before Christmas becomes your excuse why you're not getting anywhere close to what you want to be in life. So let's dial it up. That's a conversation I'm having with my, my individuals every year, same conversation. And then likewise, I start to think about my business and say, okay, now we can start to roll some classes. People are starting to come back. I'm getting some phone calls from people who have been off the, off the grid who are now returning. So how do we accommodate, grow, scale, bring people in, all those different things. So on that R&R &R versus G&H conversation, I was asking you quite simply, what do you have going on for September? Let's share. Let's talk. We had a fantastic conversation last week about someone's 21-day challenge. Um, and I'd love to hear from you. What do you have going up? What classes are coming up? What are you What are you rolling out right now? Coach Robin, you're doing all your walking programs and stuff. What's coming up for the fall for you? You can even just type a link, or if you want people to follow your Instagram. Um, link in your bio just to point you in that direction. There's a lot of stuff going on. Yes, Pilates on tour, Chicagoland. Um, I want to go to that. When is that happening? Can I afford to go to that? <laughs> Time wise because I like my Chicago people. And can I just pause for a moment and say, I like the fact that I can say I like my Chicago people, that I have people in Chicago, the Jenna Safinos and Nikki and uh, so many people. We did, that tour, we did that workshop there a few months ago, actually a few years ago now, Bethany. Kristen, yeah, so, oh man, I have a tour if I went to Chicago. Um, yeah, when is that happening? Wait, Coach Robin, you're in Chicago too, no? I know Troy's in Ohio area. Yes. Definitely follow Coach Robin Renee. If that's not on your follow list, please follow her. She's doing great work. Ay, 29 to I. That's tough. Those are tough dates. Those are tough dates. Love to, though. We drove to Buffalo. That was easy. Um, Buffalo's really, that's like an hour, though. This is like four. Still, it's still close enough I could do it. So I'm talking to myself. I'm trying to talk myself out of my commitment to myself to not do anything until October 24th. That's right. She is. 
So that rest and recovery grind and hustle combination is something that is really interesting because there's so many different cadences to that where right now I just took a weekend to just unplug. We did some fun family stuff yesterday. I had a great cross section of, of time with Alex on Friday and then whole family, extended family stuff on Sunday in between that hanging out with my son on Saturday. And it's like those, like that scratches that itch for me. That gives me that rest and recovery time. And then I'll push for another three weeks or so and then I'll be like looking for the next thing. So everyone has a different flow to that. And at the same time thinking about your business. So that uh, Plies on Tour is gonna be amazing. And maybe I should plan for that to just make a weekend out of that. It's tough. Oh, it's so tough. We'll see. What else is going on, party people? How are you getting ready for your September hustle in your business? And at the same time, I'm waiting for that answer. There was someone from Vietnam that was just in the chat a minute ago. Gotta make sure that we connect. Hi Alicia, thanks for joining us this morning. So I'm gonna roll out that five day challenge. I started to do it virtually and uh, connect with my people. That 21 day challenge that we're talking about was fantastic. So all those business ideas are great. I know Tammy has her live coming up this week on Wednesday, check that out. Misty Lynn has her thought flow coming up this week, I think, yes. We have some, we have a great guest coming up for our Wednesday. Misty, I'll send that to you. And for the next Wednesday, and for the next Wednesday. So as people are trying to chime in, um, full disclosure, I first thing I say is like, hey, what about Wednesday? Does Wednesday work for you? So I have the next few Wednesdays lined up as other people are coming in and uh, having some great conversations. So I really appreciate that. I don't have very much this morning. I wanted to touch on that rest and recovery. I also wanted to touch on, like we were saying, around those mentors and the things that we learn from those that are around us. I start to see some of the mentoring programs that are popping up and I hope that as people like listen to these conversations and these conversations go offline that there's a different level of intentionality to this round of your mentoring program. That there's a different level of intentionality that's going to your teacher program as you go out. The world has changed so much and so many more people are recognizing the, the value of being seen, heard, and valued as opposed to being dictated to this is how it goes and this is the only way. You can stay on your path with the things that you're most passionate about, but broaden the conversation at the same time and make sure that it's done in a way where it isn't about your own selfish ambition, it is about actually getting the work out there and actually making the next leader better than yourself. As long as that's done, whatever that looks like, have at it. Um, I, th I see a bunch of people in, on their Instagrams talking about mentor, mentor programs that are coming up. They're great. I wish that I could make some kind of directory um, because everyone from Claire to, I see um, uh, in Stockholm, I'm missing their name right now for a second. Uh, Jamie White is doing one through uh, Pure Body Teacher Training. Uh, there's a lot of them that are out there and a lot of them are really good. And much like my wife says, shop your instructors. Find the person that works for you, that resonates with you, the person that's gonna extract everything out of you, the person that's gonna make you the best person. You don't have to go after the big name, go after the person that's gonna make you a big name if they're dedicated to it. Um, which reminds me that I was accepted into a, another apprenticeship program and I had to decline it for now, postpone my acceptance because it just didn't make sense for me right now. But I still debate whether I'm gonna do it. I mean, I think that there's a lot to learn there and it looked good to have as a title 
look good to have on my resume of experiences, but would it make me a better teacher? Or would it be better just to have those letters behind my name? Those are the questions we need to ask ourselves. Where are you going? What do you want to do? How do you want to achieve it? What are you trying to learn? All that fun stuff. So take that into consideration. Teacher trainers, if you're doing these courses, please put that out there as well, that you're shifting it to making the people in your room the best that they can be. And we all say that, but when the rubber hits the road, are you really, really doing it? So keep these conversations in front of you. Keep following these people. Misty, Tammy, we have some amazing people that are doing great work. And uh, just keep partnering and coming alongside everyone as they're doing that. Any last comments? I am cutting this short this morning on purpose. Nice. Cool. All right, party people, we are back at it tomorrow. And that is about it. Thank you guys, have a good day.